help facilities of the Cisco IOS CLI. Let's take a look at the help facilities of the Catalyst 1900 switch. You need help, believe me, because of the sheer number of features and commands used to configure them. First, there's context-sensitive help. This command, or this feature, provides a list of commands and arguments associated with a specific command. This feature will help you configure a technology by giving you syntax of the next command when you press a question mark. There are console error messages. These are messages the switch gives you to help you identify problems with the CLI command you entered. For example, if you did not enter the proper syntax, the console error message will tell you about it and give you a pointer on where you went wrong. There's the command history buffer. This command allows you to view any of the previous commands you entered to a maximum limit. For example, if you have a long show command that scrolls off the screen, you don't want to type it all over again, do you? No, so you access the history buffer using the up arrow and press enter to repeat the command again. Well, thanks so much, Ed Yanez. It really is amazing how much assistance we get from the command line operating system. I mean, it literally telling us, oh no, sorry, Anthony, you typed in that command wrong and it's right here in the command where you went wrong. So you've really got to love the fact that we have that robust help system on the particular device. Well, right now, I want to go ahead and take a slide that you're really, really going to appreciate that's in our course. And what it is, is it is a review of a whole bunch of the commands that we saw in ICND1. So let's go ahead and jump right in and take a look at this very, very important slide. I love this. So notice, what does the command accomplish? That's our challenge here. And what configuration mode are we in when we issue the command? Pretty darn cool. Banner MOTD. Banner MOTD. That's the banner message of the day command. And we are in privileged mode or mm, global configuration mode. Wow. I totally forget. Let's go ahead and let's jump up to a device and check that out. What mode are we in when we utilize the banner message of the day command? Let's take a look. And I noticed that I'm a little, let me bump it up just a little bit so you can see my command prompt there. Perfect. All right, so let's see if the command exists here. Nope, so it is global configuration mode. Yep, that would have been my guess. So we're in global configuration mode when we issue the banner message of the day command. And sure enough, that command is to set up some information for your users about, uh, you know, about what's going on with the particular device. You could literally give them a message like, hey, there's a problem with server one today out there on the network. Erase startup hyphen configuration. Wow, this is how you erase the configuration that's stored in your device. And erasing the configuration that's stored in your device would allow you to reload your device and have nothing for the config, just the default configuration. So erase startup configuration is very powerful. Line console zero. We remember this is how we get into the console port to configure it. The console port is where we plug in that rollover cable and we plug in the rollover cable so that that particular device can be managed from us locally. Show CDP neighbors. The show CDP neighbors command is for us to view what devices are connected to us. By the way, we'd be in privileged mode when we use show CDP neighbors. And this is such a valuable command to see who we are connected to. Shutdown, no shutdown. We go in under the interface and either shut it down and see an administratively down status or we bring it up with the no shutdown command. Simple stuff, but a great review, isn't it? Configure terminal. Yeah, we know that this is the command that we're gonna to utilize 
to go into that global configuration mode where we make changes that are going to affect the device globally. A great example of something that would affect the device globally would be the naming of the device with the host name command. What other commands should we review? Well, how about the host name command? We just mentioned it. We're in global configuration mode. This is how we name our device. Line VTY 0 to 4, that's where we're going to go in and configure the Telnet or SSH, the secure shell access to the device. Show interface, a great verification command to get interface parameters. Switch port mode access, where we go in and take a switch port and make it part of the access infrastructure for clients. Copy running config to startup config. By far, this is the most important command that we've seen so far. When you work hard on configuring your device and getting it just perfect for production, you want to save that configuration so that when you reboot the device, the configuration is still there. This is, of course, how we do it. Copy, run, star allows us to make sure that we tuck away the configuration that's RAM, in RAM, excuse me, into the non-volatile RAM. How do we configure an interface? Well, we go in and we type interface, and then we indicate the interface that we want to manipulate. The login command. We use this to tell the device, use the locally configured password and let people in if they know that password. Then we've got the show port security command to verify our switch's port security settings. Switch port port security to actually set port security. Enable to go from privileged mode to non-privileged mode. IP address and mask to set an IP address. Some of these are really easy, so I'm just flying through them. The password command to set a password under an interface like a Telnet interface. Show running config to view the config that's in RAM. Switch port port security MAC address to statically assign a MAC address to a particular switch port. Enable secret, the encrypted password that protects privilege mode. IP default gateway, when we want to set a default gateway on a switch so that it can communicate beyond its local segment. Reload to literally restart a Cisco device. Show startup configuration to view the config that is initially in the NVRAM and switch port port security max to set the maximum number of MAC addresses that can be learned on a particular port. So a nice review there of a whole bunch of commands that we should be responsible for. Let's do this. We're going to be working a lot with our switches initially here in ICND2, so let's do a little bit of further review. Uh, the further review that I'd like to do with you here is let's go ahead and take this switch in its default configuration and let's give this switch a, you know, an initial config that would make sense. You know, I mean, obviously we don't want to leave the name uh, switch. That doesn't tell us anything about this particular device. So the first thing we'll do is will in fact let me do this let me type end and that brings us back to privilege mode and then let me type exit we'll go all the way out of the device so we can review what happens as we come in to the particular device's configuration so here we're going to type return or tap return to get started we're going to hit the return key and then that's going to bring us to the user mode we'll type enable in order to get into the privilege mode now, right away here, we see an issue, don't we? There's absolutely no security in place by default on this particular switch. Let's review that. So we're going to go configure terminal, host name, SW1. And notice that's going to update the host name on this device. Great. Now, let's protect this device with passwords. We'll do a password of Cisco 123 for the old school unencrypted version, the enable password. And then for the new school wonderful encrypted version, 
That's the enable secret. We'll do our passcode of Cisco, our password. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the line console zero. We'll go into the console port. We'll say, hey, don't time us out. We'll, we'll never be timed out for inactivity of the console port. This is a terrible command in production environments, exec hyphen time zero zero, but it is an awesome command in non-production environments, lab environments like this, so we never get timed out. Logging sync, this uh, stops the machine from interrupting our typing, that's great. What else? Well, let's go ahead and do the IP default gateway command as we often would on a switch. We'll set that to 10, 10, 10, 1. Awesome. Uh, let's allow Telnet access into the device. Line VTY 0 to 4. To allow for password checking locally, we put in a password, and then we say login. The login command says check that particular password at a s individual attempting to log in. All right, so there's a look at getting one of our Cisco devices ready for production. This, of course, is a review of the commands that we saw in our ICND1 class. But we needed to do this anyway, since we're going to be working with this switch today a lot. By the way, I want to send out a thank you uh, once again for the demonstration equipment that you'll see me utilizing in the class. We are at ProctorLabs.com. So big thank you to the great folks over at Proctor Labs. Uh, we went ahead and we, uh, we are utilizing their rental equipment. As you can see, they are the greatest when it comes to rental equipment. And notice it's not just routing and switching Cisco equipment that you can rent and practice with. It's a wide variety of different types of equipment there. So big, big thank you uh, out to those folks at Proctor Labs. All right, so we've gotten this configuration done. Hard work there. We do a copy, run. That's short for copy running hyphen config. And we put it over in the startup hyphen config. And it says, are you sure you want to name it startup hyphen config? Just tap enter for yes. And we have just now successfully saved our configuration that we worked so hard on here with the switch one device. All right, our question, which commands configure 192.168.123 slash 28 on fast ethernet zero slash one. So we've got to choose two here. A, is it interface FA zero slash one or is it B, interface config FA zero slash one? Well, I'm sure you remember that it is interface fast ethernet zero slash one. No such thing as option B. There's no such thing as interface config. That would return an error at the command line. Now, what about assigning the IP address? Is it IP address 192.168.23 slash 28? Can we just go ahead and do that? It would be nice, but we can't. Option C is incorrect. We can't just do it that way. We have to list out the IP in the mask. Now you notice what Cisco has done to us here. I did it to you, but Let's pretend it's Cisco in the exam environment. Now what's happened is they give us a little kind of subnetting question here, don't they? What is slash 28? Is it 255.255.255.224 or is it .240? So now they slip in a little subnetting question here on slash 28. What does that equate to? Uh, when you do the binary math here, let's see, we have a slash 28. So we've got a slash 28 for the subnet mask. Let's think. The slash 28, that's using four bits for the subnet mask in that fourth octet. So we've got 128 plus 64. That's 192. Plus, uh, plus 32. That's 224 plus 16, that's 240. 
So we can actually do this math in our head. I stink at doing math in my head, but this is easy enough for me to do in my head. It's going to be 240, isn't it? When we use those four contiguous high order bits in that fourth octet for the subnet mask, it's 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16, and that gives us a 240 in that fourth octet. So I do believe we've got A and E as the correct answers in this mock exam question. Let's check our work. Bingo, we were right on target there. Great work, everybody. It is indeed A and E that are our correct responses, and we are good to go on that particular question. Well, I've got one more for you folks by way of review of IC and D1. Here we go. What command allows the local password, command password, to be checked for Telnet access? Is it login, login local, transport input Telnet, password, or none of these? A very tricky question. Let's go ahead and read it again. What command allows the local password, and then it says command password in parentheses, to be checked for Telnet access? A very tempting response here is login local, but that is dead wrong. If you go under the Telnet lines, and you do login local, it will check for a local password and username. Notice here in the command in the question, they said the command is password. So what would have the command of password be checked for under the line? Great job. It would be the login. If we use the command login, then what we do is we use the simple command password because that's what's going to be checked. If you had configured under the Telnet lines the option B, login local, you'll have to go in and set up a username and password entry. Okay? So login just checks for a local password. Login local it checks for a username and password entry on the particular Cisco device. Transport input Telnet, that does something related. What that does is it ensures that only Telnet is permitted under the lines. We often wouldn't use that command. Instead, what we would use is transport input SSH because we want to go ahead and stick to secure shell. That would be the more common use of that command. The password command is just flat out wrong. That's not what it's asking us about. And then none of these, well, we know that the login command is what we're looking for. And I sure hope I'm right. Let's check. Let's grade it. Yeah, we were right. The answer is let A. It's the login command that allows for the checking of that local password that's been configured with the command password. So everybody in our studio audience, I can see, did great on that per those particular challenges. I saw lots of correct answers typed in. Great, great work.